Morning, Tony. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good, buddy. Good. How about yourself? Oh, all right. I'll do my, uh, I got my morning cup of coffee. Yeah, I got to get me a morning cup of coffee thing too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so the uh, a quick story for everybody out there. I had done a video on testing reads on the dyno. And I had posted it up and there was all these people who were like, oh, that's not correct. You're, you got that wrong, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like thinking to myself, you know, I wish I knew somebody that was a read expert. And then my daughter, Kelsey, pointed out to me, she's like, well, uh, didn't you say Tony Dukas was one of the guys that was like super big into reads? And I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, he's like the grand, like the grand dad of read design. And she goes, well, you know, he he's on the page. He follows us. And I'm like, oh, you got to be freaking kidding me. So that's when I reached out to you and asked you about reads. And that basically started our first question. So can you give us a little of uh, 50,000 foot overview of how did Tony get involved in reads? Right. Yeah. Years ago, I was uh, working on motocross bikes and still racing them. And uh, I guess it was right around 1971, 72, when Suzuki had the first reeds that were actually had a piston port motor, but had two sets of reeds going into the crankcase. Then in 72, Yamaha come out with the regular reed cage, as we all know it, the big V-shaped cage. And that's when I started to look at uh, different companies who were making reeds, and it was Fox and... Boyce and were the only two out there. Uh, I started to research the materials. A plastics company was next to me. I started to discuss the materials with him. He showed me where to find the materials, what companies made them. Uh, and, and basically after that, it, it was full game on and I started to do every bit of research I could. Uh, got hooked up with EBC Brakes. I'm sure everybody knows who EBC oh, yeah. is. Uh, Andy Freeman's been to my house. Uh, I used to see him at all the trade shows. He kind of took me under his wing, made a lot of huge, huge purchases in 1972. We've been friends. I'm a distributor for EBC. Uh, and that's how the game got started. Okay. Uh, after that, I met people that you know, Rob Selby. Yeah. Uh, just... Uh, Duncan, I mean, all the different motocross guys. And actually, I'll take it back. Motocross and ATV. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a friend who was an AMA referee, so I would get pit passes for all the pro races. And I always call it doing the backdoor marketing. I went to all the mechanics, talked to them all, handed them out samples, told them to throw them in their personal bikes, race bikes. Little by little, all the teams started calling me on the sides. Um, wasn't big enough, couldn't afford the big contracts with all the big OEMs. But many of the OEMs actually used my reads for many, many years. Finally, they came out with ruling that if you have the stickers on your bike, you need to be using the product. Mm. That was kind of <laughs> and So I kind of got pushed out at that point. But by then, I was already saturated. I made reads for probably, I think it's, I kind of lost count, over 50, maybe 60 different brand names. Uh, some brand names I won't even mention because uh, I'm under contract. You know, they're a proprietary product. I, re I make and design everything uh, only for those companies, and they market it under their own names. Gotcha. So EBC markets under their name you know and i've known them forever not a problem you can't buy an ebc read from me you can't buy specific reads from me i just send you to the customer you know or to the vendor i should say right so what um what was your dissatisfaction with the the reads at the beginning that pushed you in the direction of well can this be done better Oh, uh, you know, I'm always, uh, you know, always that kind of mechanic that just wants to do research and, you know, make a better mousetrap. There's always something different. Once I started to learn the materials, material construction, that was only the first part. Uh, learning all the different materials, learning the different tensions. 
Uh, again, this will be a long, probably a couple, a couple different sessions. Yeah. Um, retentions, read pedal design, and we're talking pedals only right now. Retention, read material, read pedal designs, cloth weaves, thicknesses. You know, I get customers that call me and says, you know, I want a 12,000 stick read. Okay, I have one that I can blow on it, and it's like a limp noodle. It'll open up, and I got another one at 12,000. You can't even pry it off the damn, you know, cage. Mm -hmm. You're not. Thickness is only one of the variants. Cloth weaves, lifting tension is the critical factor. And then the design of the pedal. When you have a four pedal per side reed cage, mm -hmm. Instead of running four separate pedals, there's a benefit to running two pedals. Now, you have to work within the tension parameters, and then that two-pedal design eliminates a lot of the reed flutter. Uh, once you eliminate that reed flutter, it stabilizes everything, it increases the velocity. Um, Boyson reeds are a two-stage reed with a thick reed that never really comes off the reed cage, so it virtually forces everything down, increases the velocity. The fact that it's got an open hole, now the tip of that lower reed will open about 10 thousandths. Uh, it all depends on the motors, okay? Uh, when you start with the little 60 cc's, 50 cc, 80s, all the velocity, should say the velocity characteristics and the volume characteristics come into play. Um, the Boyson style read, hate to talk about competition, but you know, the Boyson style read works very, very well and it works incredible in a lot of conditions. But when you go to a much larger type of read cage or a much larger type of motor that requires a certain volume, you can't make that up with the velocity. Right. Yeah, at a certain point, then it has to be handed over to flow. Correct, exactly. You know, and then that's where you start getting back into reed cage design, tip designs. I mean, it, and it's, like I said, we can go on for hours. Um, back to the same basic thing is those thicknesses and those tensions. I developed a tension measuring setup mm -hmm. where I measure all my reads at 10 millimeters of lift um, and that tension. Now I have taken and sent those gauges and showed a lot of my motor builders. Uh, they will measure the tension of the read with the exact same device that I have here. So then we're talking apples to apples, you know, right. uh, once they know the tensions, then we work on materials and designs and the tension requirements for each engine. And this is and, this is all stuff that you've learned because you went on this journey because there's no I, I don't think probably there's any school that teaches you how to do this. So this is just something you just went after. I absolutely I I, love, I always say. Um, you know, there is just every piece of information and thank God for today's web. And it's and it's same thing with the social media. It is the greatest thing in the world and the worst thing. And the in worst. The world. Yeah. And every piece of information that you want is out there, but you just got to be careful of who you're learning it from. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a statistic. Oh my gosh. I saw some facts the other day go showing that um, on the, if you look at the internet as a whole, about 30% of it is usable information. About 70% of it is garbage. And that's mostly people will start developing off of the garbage because they yeah. think that the mass of information um, is what the truth is. But if, if that was the truth, we'd still believe the earth was flat. Right. Exactly. Hey, so before I let you go today, there's something behind you right there. Well, what is that? Here, let me uh, try and get. Oh, crap. It what? is a. It is a V twin 587 cc. 
two-stroke engine, custom built, and that is going to go into one of my race bikes, which is an Aprilia RSV 1000 RR chassis. Oh my God! That will, be, that will be one of my race bikes in the near future. Oh well, we're going to have to talk more about that too. Oh, and I've got oh, it's just I've got endless things that I can bring up. Uh, Mainly, like I said, the first thing is what we're covering now in the first three or four segments are the Reed Cage, Reed Pro all the Reed products, because that's what put me on the map. Um, one of the other things that I do that most people that your guys may not even know is I do a lot of watercraft mufflers. Uh, personal watercraft, high performance racing exhaust, basically mufflers. Uh -huh. That's just the, that is the two products that I do that really kind of again put me on the map. I uh, sell to all the different distributors. Um, but two strokes, two stroke passions, which is why uh, it brought us together. Yeah. Is we need to get this information. Uh, I, once I post this on my website, I'll put a link to the written description of what I am saying today. Yes. And it takes far too much of my time to write it all up. The digital format, I think, is brilliant and I think is going to help educate all the good tuners out there, all the good two stroke tuners. And that's why we do this education. And that's why we do this. Yeah. All right, buddy. Well, you have a good day and we'll get back together again. Okay, absolutely. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Thank you.